Hi, I'm Dave from boynaband.com and welcome to day one of my seven day song on Psytrance, where I'll be going through the process of making an LSD horrific tune over seven days. At the end, I'll post the finished song and you guys can post your completed songs as video responses. Psytrance is a genre that advocates raves with intense hypnotic music and getting horrendously mashed on hard drugs. Uh, some good childhood memories there. In this Reason 5 tutorial, I'll go through things like making a driving heavy Psytrance beat, a dirty acid synth bass, some acid leads, pads, those all important effects, structure, and mixing and mastering. I'll also try and keep you in the loop <laughs> with some bits of music theory as we go along. This is the 10th 7 day song, so holy crap at that. Be sure to check out the other ones as well. And also I encourage you to post your tracks on the boyinaband.com forum and share your music, make some friends, and learn more about production. So let's get on with day 1 of the tutorial, where we'll be starting with the Psytrance beat, with techniques like parallel distortion, EQing, compression, and layering with Kong. Okay, let's begin. So let's right click and M class mastering suite combi it up, keeping it bypassed for now, so we can get a decent mix without the master since it can change the overall mix considerably. After the mastering suite, we'll right click and make a mix of 14 to 2. Let's make ourselves a combinator and name it beat. As in, a flannel shirt does not give you permission to beat your girlfriend no matter how often she speaks out of turn. And inside it, right click, create. Line makes a 6 to 2, keep it small in this one. And this is what we'll be doing some of the parallel distortion with later on. Next, we're going to right click and make ourselves a shiny new instance of Kong Drum Designer. Now, after you've entertained yourself with the MPC ness of it for a good half hour, it's time to get to work. Initialize it, right click, initialize patch. Then let's load up some simple sounds into the sweet sampler. So the first pad, we're going to add a synth based drum module. This will be the thudding undertone that will punctuate the entire track. So you want to make sure you get it sounding good. So to put it in, we're just going to hit show drum and effects. And then down here in drum module, we're going to click this little drop down and select synth bass drum. To give it a bit of a trancy attack to the kick, turn the bend amount here up a notch. And the kick will start to have more of a noticeable attack. As opposed to... You don't want it too much though, or you'll just be shooting lasers at Daleks. There we go. Turn the noise mix here to zero. Since we want a nice clean kick, and adjust the tone to taste. I'll keep mine at around 40 I think, so let's take it down a little bit where it's not so distorted that it's a GABA kick, but simultaneously it's not so clean that it might be used in Vanish Oxy Action adverts. If you're not from England, substitute that reference with your favourite dishwasher tablet of choice. Now, for a nice and prominent click for the kick. Flick, click, frick, when C, to full. And the click rizzo, the resonance, to just over a half. And listen to how the click, kick, frick sounds more slick. It's much more prominent. Lastly, take the attack, here to zero. So it punches nice and fast, and the decay, take it down to a quarter. So it's not quite as long. So there's our undertone, but it needs beefing up. So throw on a compressor, a little drop down in effects one slot. Take the amount up to three quarters. That sounds like it's quieter, but wait. And then we're going to bring the makeup gain up by the same amount. Hear the difference there? Now if we turn it off, and on, much more punchy. That's just boosting the volume and taming the variation a bit. Lastly, chuck on a parametric EQ, and boost the lowest frequency possible by a couple of notches. And you can start to feel that sub poking through. If you've got speakers that will let you. So there's the first part of the kick. Now we're going to layer that with a sample. On the pad above here, scroll up a little bit, selected pad 5, we're going to make an NN Nano Sampler and load up a sample. So drop down, NN Nano Sampler, and let's load up a sample. Okay, here we are in the samples folder. I'm just going to choose one from the Boy and Band sample packs. Got all these trance ones out here. And I think trance kick 11 is nice and punchy. So let's select that one. So, there's our sample. To make sure it triggers straight away, 
I'm just going to move the sample start right to there. You might not need to do this on most samples. I just think some of these kicks I accidentally gave a little bit of a gap at the start. So just correct for that down there. And then all we're going to do is scroll up here and hit the D button here in the pad group link section and do the same for drum one. Now watch what happens when we trigger drum one. Both pads trigger at the same time. Simultaneously, you might say, unless you suffer from hippopotamonstrosis esquipedaliophobia, of course. Now, throw a filter on the FX1 slot for drum five. If we scroll down, we're just going to high pass it. It's on low pass, LP, band pass, high pass, mode two. And we're gonna bring the frequency down to about 40. Ish. And this just stops the subs from overlapping between the two kicks. So this one will just add some extra tone to the high end. Bring the resonance right down as, as well for extra tonality. Unless you prefer it up there, but I think it's a bit nicer down the bottom. And the FX2 slot here is perfect for a nice bit of overdrive. Take the drive up a few notches. And the size to about three quarters. And check out that tone difference. Then mix the kicks with this little level knob that you've got up here in this cute little window in the top part of Kong. So you can hear both at the same time. Et voila! Puncherific kick. Next, let's tackle the snare. First thing will be a synth snare drum modeler on pad two. So let's sort that. Synth snare. Pitch it down a notch. Being careful not to get sucked into the challenge of resisting becoming a generic hip hop song. Take the decay up to about half. So there's a bit more there, giving it a longer, deeper tone than the harmonic balance, I think is better, a bit lower. And the noise mix and decay could do with coming up a few notches. This noise gives it a long trancy tail, so instead of psh, it sounds more like psh, so. There we go. Now it's time to compress it with a zero release. So the tail is nice and loud. And then take it to over half gain, just so the whole sample is nice and loud. And then we're going to link it to the pad above. Drum six, we're going to add another NN Nano sampler and do it in the same way we did before. See the link thing here? Let's use E this time rather than D. <laughs> use E. Okay, the snare on this module above the drum two module will have the nice tonality we want, cruelly using the other snare to make it seem better than it actually is. There's a lot of emotional torment involved in layering snares. So, NN Nano Sampler. And let's load up Trance Snare 5. Let's have a listen to that one. Oh, just turned off the uh, other snare so we can clearly hear this one here. So bring up that sample start, if need be. I think I had a problem with the sample start points when I made these samples. And then compress it with a slight increase in gain. Now, to really make it shine, we're going to use a parametric EQ to bring up a hidden gem of a frequency in the sample. So keep the frequency to half once we've created the parametric EQ. 